This video covers the Year 8 Percentages Applications Test Preview. So these are the sorts of questions you should see at an A and B level. I'll put some time tags below with question numbers for anyone following along with the test preview. Otherwise, I'll put a description of the sorts of questions down there for you as well. Question one is very similar to the questions that we were getting asked at the end of the fundamentals test. So we'll do a profit one and we'll do a loss one just so we're nice and clear. So what I'm looking for here is to see whether I've made a profit off this or a loss. Uh, I bought something for $10 and I've sold it for $30, so I know that I've made a profit. And then I need to work out what that percentage is. Okay. So what I will do is I'll have a look at what I sold it for and I'll subtract what I purchased it for. And I know that I've profited $20 here. But I want to know what that is as a percentage of the original amount, okay? So I'll take my profit of $20 and put it over my purchase price of $10, and then I will put that into my calculator, which will give me the answer to. Now this is a, a decimal form, okay? Even though it doesn't look like it, it's 2.0 if you like. To get this into a percentage, we need to work out what that percentage is, okay? So what I'll do is I'll have a look at what I sold it for, and I'll subtract what I purchased it for, and I know that I've profited $20 here. But I want to know what that is as a percentage of the original amount, okay? So I'll take my profit of $20 and put it over my purchase price of $10, and then I will put that into my calculator, which will give me the answer to. Now this is a, a decimal form, okay? Even though it doesn't look like it, it's 2.0 if you like. To get this into a percentage, what I need to do is I need to multiply it by 100, and that will give me a profit of 200%. Now that's 200% of this original price, okay? So the original amount plus an additional $10 makes my $20 profit, okay? So it's the percentage of profit, not overall. In the next one, I can see that I've purchased something for 160, but I've sold it for 120, so I've clearly made a loss here. So if I take my selling price and I subtract my original price, I can see that I've actually lost $40, okay? So this negative is going to be a loss. So it's important when I'm answering these that I actually put down. Okay, question two, there's a couple of ways of answering these. Uh, have a look at the answer sheet if you wanna have a look at how to work out what 25% of this is and then subtract it off there. I think that that is a slow way of doing it and it lends itself to making a mistake. So I use friends of 100 instead. If I was looking at purchasing something in a shop and it told me that it was 25% off, <clears throat> then if I remove 25% of this, I know that I still have 75% of it left. Okay? It's friends of 100 like you learned in primary school. So instead of working out what 25% of this is and then subtracting it from the original, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 200 and I'm going to multiply it by 75%, okay? And this will tell me what 75% of the 200 is, which is going to work out to be $150. And that is a better way for me when I'm walking around in the shop with my phone as a calculator to work out what the new price of an item is. In question 2B, I have to increase $40 by 25%. Okay? Now, rather than, again, working out what 25% of 40 is and then adding it back to 40 again, there's an efficient way of doing this. If I take my $40 and I increase it by 125%, then I've still got my original 40 and I also have 25% of 40. And if I put that into my calculator... I will find that that has increased to $50. Question 3A wants me to find out what discount I got when I purchased the car. It's normally $35,000 and I managed to buy it for $27,500. So to do that, what I'm going to have to work out is how much I actually saved. So my discount in dollars is going to be the $35,000 that it should have cost minus the 27500 which is a saving of $7,500. Okay, now I need to turn that into a percentage. So if I take my saving of $7,500 and divide it by how much the car should have been, okay, and then what I do is I pop that into my calculator, 
uh, we'll get 0 0.2143 and then to turn that into a percentage I just multiply it by 100 and I'll find that I got a 21.43% discount Okay, in question 3B, you got really excited because normally these maths textbooks cost 60 bucks, but you've managed to pick it up for $35.50. So you want to know what percent discount you got. So let's work out how much money you saved first of all. So if we take our, so let's call that D for discount. If we take our original 60 and we subtract $35.50, then we know our saving has been $24.50. To turn that into a percentage, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take your saving of uh, sorry, $24.50 and divide it by how much the textbook originally cost, cost. And then if you pop that into your calculator, you're going to get uh, 0 0.4083. And if I multiply that by 100 to turn it into a des uh, percentage, rather, I will find that I got a 40.0. 83% discount. Okay, question four. These questions are fairly um, confusing, um, but you, they don't need to be. You, just look at it and just solve it as you read it, okay? You substitute odds with multiplication, and I would be turning the percentages into decimals. You could also use fractions if you wanted to. So I'd just be rewriting it as I see it, which is 0 0.2 times 0 0.5 times 600, and then putting it into my calculator, which would give me 60 kilos. I'm not forgetting the units. Okay, 4B, I would be converting these into decimals again. Uh, you can put them into your calculator as fractions. Two thirds is one that comes up pretty regularly and it's one worth just committing to memory. Otherwise you can use your calculator to find it out, but it's 0 0.66666 repeated, so 0 0.67 multiplied by 7.5 multiplied by 52,000. Now don't forget, I've, I've left these as percentages at this stage, so it's not quite solved yet. Let's turn them into decimals, okay? 0 0.206 times 0 0.075 times 52,000. And now you can pop that into your calculator and you will get $806. Okay, question five, couple of ways of doing these. Um, Another good way to do this might be to have a look at the answer sheet and see how um, that teacher has answered these. I will use algebra because we've just finished algebra so we know how to use it. I'm going to let X be the original price in these questions. So what they're giving us is the retail price, how much you're going to pay for the chocolate. And what they're asking for is the wholesale price. Now that's what the shop owner pays for it, okay? So he buys it for a certain amount, marks it up by 75%, and then sells it to you for $5. And we wanna know how much he pays for it, okay? So remember that whatever he paid for it, or she paid for it, they have increased by 175%, okay? The original amount they paid for it, okay? and an additional 75% of that. And that has become five, ugh, $5. Okay, so what we're going to do is balance method. It says to multiply, so I'm going to divide by 1.75 and I'll find that the original price would have been $2.86. Okay, so in the second example, really expensive chocolate, remember that this is the retail price, the price you're paying for it. The wholesale price is what the shop owner paid for it. 
and then he's gone and marked it up by an additional 75 cents so he's marked it up by 175 cents so we're going to let x be the original price and we're going to say the original price was increased by 175 percent okay the original amount and an additional 75 percent of the original amount and we had to pay 40. So what did the shopkeeper pay? We use balance method, it says to times by 1.75, so we're gonna divide by 1.75 both sides, we'll be left with X, which is the original amount, which would have been $22.86. Question six is a double stepper. Um, a car costs 24 grand, they've reduced it to 20, but it still didn't sell, so they reduced it by the same percentage again. Now, we don't know what the percentage is, so we'll start with that, okay? So, we know that um, if it was 24,000, and they reduced it 20,000, then we know that it's been discounted by $4,000, okay? That's nice and clear. Let's work that out as a percentage. So. 4,000, just move the camera over a little bit, of the original 24,000, okay, if we pop that into our calculator, we'll end up with uh, 0.166%, uh, 666666, as a percentage, if we multiply that up, it is a saving of 16.6%. Now, the question is only half answered, okay? So now what they want to do is they want to reduce the $20,000, the new price of the car, by a further 16.6%, okay? Now, a couple of ways of doing this, but me, um, if it was, 24,000 and they reduced it 20,000 then we know that it's been discounted by $4,000 okay that's nice and clear let's work that out as a percentage so 4,000 just move the camera over a little bit of the original 24,000 okay if we pop that into our calculator, we'll end up with uh, 0 0.166%, uh, 666666. As a percentage, if we multiply that up, it is a saving of 16.6%. In question 7, this time, it's similar to question six, except this time something's increasing in value. So this time there's a baseball card or basketball card that's going up in value. So let's work out what percentage it's increased by. So it was worth 135 at the end. Originally it was worth 120. So it's had a rise in value of $15. We need to know what that is as a percentage. So what we need to do is we're going to have to put the original, sorry, the increase of 15 over the original amount of 120 and put that into our calculator, which is going to give us uh, 0 0.125. We'll just convert that into a percentage, which we know is just multiplying by 100 by now. So it has increased by 12.5%. Okay. If it then rises in value by the same percentage again, how much will it be worth? Okay, so now it's worth $135, and we want to know what a 12.5% increase on this is, okay? So what I'm going to multiply it by is 112.5%, okay? So I'm putting it in as a decimal, so I don't need that decimal there, sorry. So it will be, I'll just scratch that, 135, the increased value, and I'm going to increase it by a further 120, and put that into our calculator, 
which is going to give us uh, 0 0.125. We'll just convert that into a percentage, which we know 